Hey, welcome to this video. So today I wanna to show sort of my process and kind of break down my workflow and techniques for animating a completely new character or creature. So working in games, you'll be you know animating a lot of different types of characters and creatures. In my case, I've worked on quite a bit of creature animation in games like Dauntless, Spyro, as well as the Elder Scrolls Online. So there are a lot of really fun, unique creatures and monsters to animate. And I kind of developed a workflow or a process that I used when animating any new type of creature. So what I'm gonna be using in this example is the ghoul rig. And I'll go ahead and open it up. And this is a completely free rig. You can download it. It's a really fun rig to use. So if you want to download it and start animating with it, I'll make sure to link this in the description below. And I'll go ahead and close that. But I wanted to use this as an example just because it is something that, you know, I've, I've ran into quite a bit, especially with working on games like Elder Scrolls Online, when you've got a lot of like really cool creatures to animate. So whether you're currently working in the industry or you're a student studying animation, the same process that I use can be done for really any stage of your animation journey. So if you are working on maybe a new student animation and you're working on a new character that you're gonna be, you know, do, maybe doing like an acting or dialogue shot, um, this sort of process may help you with sort of approaching that in the best way possible. So I've got this rig open up in my scene and as an animator, something that is usually one of the most difficult parts of starting an animation is opening up just your blank scene with your rig in there. So this can be a pretty daunting prospect of basically, you know, starting with a blank canvas. So to help kind of get over this really big hurdle of, you know, first opening up your scene with the rig. I like to do as much preparation, as much planning before I even start animating this character. And I don't necessarily mean doing like thumbnail pose sketches. I mean just figuring out who this character is, how I want them to move, and do a lot of just experimentation and playing around with the rig to sort of develop a personality and a unique character for this specific creature. So let's go ahead and go over my process for that. So usually the first thing that I do is I start gathering as much reference images that I feel like kind of fit with either the design of the character or maybe the personality that I'm going for within the character. So in this case, this is a, you know, ghoul type character. So I'd probably just go on Google images and start, you know, searching for ghoul reference, ghoul drawings, anything that I can pull inspiration from that basically I just think looks cool. And I might want to pull some things from those and just start to, you know, imagine what this character's personality might be. So in this case, I would just go on Google images. And in this case, I just Googled uh, creepy ghoul art and just, you know, look through here and try to find things that might be inspiring to you as you're working on a new character or creature. Obviously with animation, you know, finding or shooting your own video reference is extremely helpful, but it's also helpful just to find you know, still reference images of similar characters or creatures that you can start just basically to get your kind of creative juices flowing and just get some inspiration into your character. So you don't feel like you're going into a new creature or character like this completely blind. So there's a lot of really cool, you know, poses we can look at, just ways some of these creatures are standing that we might be able to pull some, some inspiration from and really just gather a large kind of reference board for all of these different reference images. And also I'll expand my search, you know, way beyond just looking for specifically ghouls. You know, I might look at, you know, orcs from Lord of the Rings that might have kind of a similar feeling to it, or maybe just weird other like creature or monster, you know, reference images that I can pull from. Maybe like gargoyles might be a good kind of reference point that I can look at to kind of just get that inspiration of the creature that I'm working on. So once I've gathered, you know, all the reference images that I want to for my creature, I use this program called Quadro. It's a completely free program and it's a way to just display reference images on your monitor in a really cool way. You can stack your reference images really easily. 
you can layer them. You can also set it up so that, you know, the reference images will always be displayed at the top. So you don't, you know, maybe open up a window and then your reference images will be hidden. Basically, you can just lock it to your monitor so that basically they never move or they never get lost behind another window. So I highly recommend downloading this software. And then once you download it, it'll just be displayed in your the bottom tray of your operating system and then you can just you know start adding in images to this and i'll kind of just quickly show that process so with this i just start adding in you know the reference images that i found online and can start you know just putting them into position here so you know you can shrink this down you can right click it and choose like fit to window or fit to image and then basically i'll just create sort of like a mood board for one of my monitors that will always be displaying all of my reference images so that as I'm starting to pose out my character, I can always look at those for just good inspiration as I'm working on a character. So I'll just add this image to the corner and I'll start adding a few, a few more to kind of just show sort of how I begin to kind of start setting these, these reference images up. So we've got this reference image and I'll, you know, just drag it in here. Um, can fit to image or I can, and scale it up and do fit to window. And then again, I'll just start creating this mood board for one of my monitors that will always be displayed as I'm mainly working on the very beginning stages of a new creature. So especially when I'm, you know, playing around with pose ideas, maybe idle poses, maybe some run poses that I feel like might match the creature that I'm working on. So once I get all of my reference images set up, this is basically what my side monitor would look like. I would always have this up there as I'm starting the early stages of working on a new creature. This is just my mood board with basically all the art and reference images that I think, you know, basically just feels cool that might just bring, you know, more personality into the creature I'm working on. So usually I'll probably have a lot more reference images than this, but I just wanted to grab a few to kind of just show what you know, kind of what this mood board might look like. So you can see, you know, I've grabbed some creatures that aren't ghouls, even though this rig that we're working on is a ghoul rig. Um, grabbed, you know, a couple orcs, goblin down here, just because, you know, this has a similar maybe feeling I'm going for, this, this sort of like twisted up kind of pose that a lot of these reference images have. You know, this character right here is more of like a vampire character, but it does provide, you know, an interesting feeling and an interesting pose for this creature. Um, so you can see, a lot of these, you know, feel similar, but they all have, you know, their unique uh, personality to them. So once I feel like I got a lot of reference to kind of inspire me with this creature, I'll then go in and just start creating a lot of different poses, kind of trying to figure out this character's personality. I won't really start working on any type of animation for this creature. I just really want to get a feeling of its personality and doing that with just single poses can be a really great starting point. And again, it allows me to approach a new creature like this where I'm approaching it from a much more kind of methodical way. I'm thinking about the personality of the creature first. I'm not jumping into any type of animation. Starting from a completely blank canvas like this is difficult enough, but once you actually get things like a mood board set up and just start thinking about you know who this creature is, it'll just make the process of animating much easier because you'll feel like you already have a really strong understanding of where you want to take this creature before you even start animating. So with this, I'll probably quickly create a selection set for all the controls. I'll do all. And I also probably want to just change my arms to FK real quick. And I'll probably need to add those to the selection set as well. And then I'll just start working on a bunch of different poses. So I'll kind of show that process again with my, you know, mood board to the side for inspiration and trying to, you know, come up with kind of a unique, unique feeling or personality for this creature. And we can just play around with lots of different poses. So maybe I'll start with something that might be its sort of idle pose and just start, you know, playing around with this. Maybe I can have the hands or the arms up a little bit, maybe work on a really quick kind of hand pose here of getting the fingers into a bit more of a kind of interesting shape. So maybe bringing the thumb out something like that and then curling it a bit. Again, just creating a bit more of a unique shape for these fingers. Something that's in like a little bit more of a claw 
type shape for for the fingers. Maybe I'll grab the, the chest, bring it down, grab the head again, kind of just working on a unique pose for this guy. Maybe it can be back a little bit. Maybe this foot can be forward. This hip could be rotated up a bit. Maybe it could be leaned over that foot a little bit more. Maybe we can get like a bit of chest rotation in there. Maybe bring this hand up. Again, I would just be, you know, creating a lot of different poses to try to figure out this character. And I'll probably, you know, grab the finger controls on the right side, and then I'll do Anabot's mirror to left. And it looks like it broke. Maybe you can't mirror with this rig. I probably actually need to set up my uh, mirror snapshot settings, but instead of doing that, I'll just do a similar quick pose on these fingers. Definitely a you know pretty rough pose, but it's allowing me to kind of again just start getting stuff in Maya. Basically, just starting to lay stuff down on the canvas. And I can start grabbing some of these chest mover controls. Be all right. I could even like play around with maybe getting like more twist in the body, and then maybe having the the creature kind of twisting and looking forward a bit more. Something like that. I might not like that quite as much. It does add a nice kind of asymmetry to the pose. That might work. Um, the, I do feel like the chest is a little bit kind of twisted up. I'll probably undo that. And usually, actually, a better process to take. And one that I usually use is when I'm working on poses like this, you know, I'll just start with just laying down a rough pose, jump to frame five, and I'll start with that same pose, but then again, maybe do something a little bit different. So this is where maybe on the next pose, I'll try adding like a little bit of twist and uh, bend and asymmetry to the pose a bit more. Get the legs more at an angle like this rather than kind of straight on. They're twisted a bit more. Just play around with what does it feel like if the arms are not as bent, I don't know if I like that, at least in this pose that I'm working on. Maybe I could play around with getting, you know, a lower pose, kind of leaned up, working on the arms, the shoulders on this rig. I feel like they're collapsing a bit there. There's some skinning issues on that. Um, I'll probably close the mouth. You know, I could play around with keeping the mouth open, but you know, probably close the mouth there and then do something like this. And then maybe I'll go, you know, so this is a similar pose, but slightly different feeling. Um, I probably, if this is staring straight on, then it looks like I'll probably need to start twisting this more because I still want the creature to be looking straight ahead. So I'll add, you know, a little bit of bend to the neck to keep the creature still looking forward. But now he's got like this little bit of tilt to his body. His body is not completely facing just directly forward. There's like a little bit of twist, but he's still looking forward. Um, so I'll do something like this and then maybe another pose that I would try. Maybe I'll copy this pose at the beginning and then maybe I'd experiment with, you know, what does it feel like if rather than his arms being, you know, curled in more of like a ready combat stance, what if his arms are kind of open more, kind of more like dangling at the side which we saw in some of those reference images as well. Some versions of ghouls where they might just be, you know, kind of the arms might be kind of dangling to the side a bit. Almost gives it slightly kind of like creepier feel to it. Maybe bring up the chest. Might rotate the neck a little bit more. Maybe bring the neck up, kind of following sort of the flow of the spine through the neck. And then, you know, maybe this arm is a little bit further behind, behind the character. And then this one can be, you know, forward, kind of in front of the character. Play around with a interesting pose for the hand, probably just bringing them in like that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm in love with this pose, but that's really the, the process here is just playing around with lots of different poses to really start kind of figuring out what feels interesting for this character. So this maybe, you know, might be more of its 
you know, stance maybe when it's not in combat fighting the player. And then maybe this one might be it's, you know, going from here to here might be it's like in combat actually attacking the player stance. So I'd probably play around with different types of then maybe what does it feel like if he's standing, you know, when we're upright? Is that something I could try? So this is really the the process that I take. And I spent a lot of time just playing around with different poses, looking at my mood board, trying to find poses that I feel like fit this creature and the feeling that I'm going for. And I'll create a ton of different poses. I'll create, you know, the in combat poses. I'll create the out of combat poses. Maybe I'll create like the stealth poses. If I know this creature will need, you know, sort of stealth locomotion, I might work on, you know, the sneaking or stealth poses, maybe the crouching poses, just a ton of different poses that I think will just allow me to build the personality of this creature that I'm actually starting to animate. And then the next step I would take would be probably taking, you know, a couple of my favorite poses that I feel like fit this creature the most and, you know, feel the, the coolest on this creature. And I would actually start creating just very basic idle animation for those poses. So getting that basic kind of breathing rhythm in there and then start figuring out how would this character actually breathe? Would it be like really heavy, fast breathing or would it be, you know, kind of short, kind of shallow breaths? And I would start playing around with that idle animation and basic breathing, which will also, you know, help me establish that personality. So really the the process that I take when creating and working on any new creature is to first start with that mood board, gather as much reference as I can that will inspire, you know, the creature that I'm working on and just give me a lot of good inspiration. And then I'll actually jump into Maya and just start creating a ton of different poses for the creature. Again, not doing any animation at that point. I'm just trying to establish the, the personality and the feel of the creature. And then the next step after that would be starting to build the, the idle poses off, or excuse me, the idle animation off my favorite idle poses. And then I would start the next step, probably after that, once I establish, you know, what feels like a really cool kind of breathing rhythm for this character. Obviously, it feels a, li a little bit more like a kind of creepy, stocky type of character. So I might, you know, in the idle animation, try to get that same type of feeling within the breathing. And then the next step of that would be probably working on a test, you know, walk cycle or run cycle two really important animations that will also allow me to establish the character and the feel of this creature. How the character is actually going to walk or run is going to be, you know, the most important animations for actually showing, you know, the character's uh, personality and feel within the game. So yeah, this is the process that I take. Hopefully you find it helpful. Again, this same exact, you know, workflow can be used in really any situation. It's just about preparing yourself before you jump into working on a completely new character or creature. You know, opening up a blank Maya canvas with just the rig and it's, you know, T pose or A pose is, you know, a really scary process because you're not really sure what you should do next. But I find as long as I give myself enough time to just prepare for the creature, just gathering as much reference as I can, creating that mood board will really point me in the right direction to actually building the entire animation set for the creature itself. So I think that's going to be it for this video. If you found it helpful, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this.